<laughs> Anyways, the man that you mentioned, I'm happy you did, so I didn't. It didn't slip out of my mouth. I need not be losing any friends over there yet. But <laughs> Lee Fitting is the guy. Okay, yes, he, he, is, he the guy. is the guy. I got a chance to meet him whenever I first took my trip up to ESPN. Just, there's just gentleman of a dude, really, honestly. But I didn't know he was the guy, and I didn't even know where I was going. By the way, I signed my deal. 17 hours before this thing started, and they just said I'm going to be on a plane to Charlotte. <laughs> you did? I didn't know that. Yeah, bro, when we made that announcement, it's like basically when it happened. I mean, wow. uh, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. So whenever I showed up at this seminar, okay, it, 1 o'clock is when it starts. I flew out in the morning. 12 to 1 is lunch. So I flew out. I got there like 1030. Went and checked into my room, had to go get hairspray from Target, went back to my room, <laughs> got down there at like 12.30 to get some lunch. I walk into the cafeteria. It's like I'm the new kid at the high school. It literally is. <laughs> Every table's filled, and nobody's even looks. Everybody's having their own conversation. So I literally looked around. I was like, well, I ain't fucking doing this for sure. <laughs> I am too old to be doing this bullshit. So I, I got a cup of tea, and I went and sat out in the lobby all by myself, okay? So I go sit out in the lobby where everybody's checking in. Hasselbeck shows up at like 45. He comes in. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, bro, look in there. I don't know anybody in there. I, I literally know everybody. He's like, everybody knows you, though. I was like, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> even worse. So Hasselbeck and I go in there at 12, like 52, because he's talking. His, his brother, by the way, who I met for the first time, they are the same individual. <laughs> they are the same person. I, I've never met him face to face. I've only seen him on TV. They look the exact same, and he is the exact same person as Matt is. And, so, and for the record, they're both wonderful dudes and hilarious yeah <laughs> and very funny yeah they're funny they're wonderful and hilarious so i'm having this conversation with the hasselbecks outside we go in to get food there's no forks left <laughs> there was nothing left all the all the silver because we only had four or five minutes before we had to get in there so we uh, i used a butter knife <laughs> i used a butter knife to get like a couple like of the the steaks that were left in there and uh, a couple of the fish and i'm just like shoveling it in my mouth <laughs> hasselbeck sitting there and now it's 12 57 we're the only people in the cafeteria now me and the hasselbeck are the only people in the cafeteria so then we walk over to where the room is and as soon as i walk in Somebody I've never met before who now I know is a very incredible person named Lindsay just hands me a microphone. Oh, yeah. She hands me a microphone. Right, I don't even know where I'm at. Literally have no clue what we're at right now. I don't even know what it is. I just know that my broadcast, broadcast crew is there. So I know we're hanging out. But I have no idea what this is. I walked into this room. There's like 400 people in the room. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> what am I at right now? This lady, it's one minute before it starts. We're the last people in the room. You never want to be the last people in the room. We are the last people in the room. And then this lady just hands me a microphone. She goes, uh, we were wondering if you could be voice of God and get everybody in their seats. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> she was like, yeah, yeah. We were wondering if you could do that. I was like, yeah, where are we right now? <laughs> she, she must have thought I was on so many drugs. I was like, oh, what's this called? She was like, it's the college football seminar. Uh, we do this every year. I'm like, okay, thank you. And then, so I start hitting the microphone, right? Voice of God. I'll just do this from the back of the room. I start hitting it to see if it's on. And there's nothing. It's not. I'm like, it's not on. They're like, oh, you got to go up to the front. I'm like, are you fucking? <laughs> are you kidding me? I know none of these people. So I walk up to the front of the room and they go, you're good. And I go, all right, well. Uh, it was I, very funny. It was very funny. You did a good job. I, and he won. Like, look, I knew Pat because I had had him on my podcast, and we had met each other at the Indianapolis 500 several years ago. And he's up there doing his thing. And I'm like, the man is like a rookie. And they're bringing him in here to be the voice of God. And then he just dropped the F-bomb. The second he dropped the F-bomb, everybody went, oh, shit, this is real. <laughs> so I dropped I, – I, so I was reading the room, right? They're the ones that did this to me, yep. right? They're the ones that put me up there. They just wanted everybody to stop talking to each other because it's like a reunion. This college football seminar is like a reunion because nobody will see each other again because they all go their separate first day ways. First school. No, well, they all go their separate first ways. First day and last day. So it's a yeah. first and last. They're literally, this is just like their day to meet with other producers, directors, analysts, get because everybody just goes their own certain way. They're on the road. It's like a circus, you know? It's a traveling circus. So it's like a reunion. So when all 400 people got in that room that we were all laid into, basically. They're all talking like as if it's like a high school dance. Like everybody's just bullshitting. And they're like, oh, if you can get everybody to sit down. I'm like, oh, I don't know. If, all right. Here we go. I only know one speed, by the way, if we're going to do this. <laughs> so I, I, Dan Orlovsky sitting in like the front row. He goes, what are you doing? I was like, I have no idea, Dan. I have no idea. <laughs> and then he turned my mic on. 
like less than two seconds after I told Dan, I have no idea. And I went right into, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is right into it. And I was reading the room for like the first two sentences. There were people in the back of the room that as soon as they heard me, they did like this slow turn. And they're like, what is this? And I was looking around the room and my first two sentences, Steve Levy gave me like a couple pops in like my first two sentences. I was like, he's a pretty... He's a pretty yeah. OG in this whole thing. I mean, if he's oh, laughing. He's a real OG. Yeah, I was like, if he's laughing, we're good. And I looked to my left, and there's another man named Steve who's pretty important. He was laughing. So he's the very important. Very important. <laughs> that guy also very important. <laughs> he was front row to the left. He was laughing. So when I saw Steve laughing, and, or Steve laughing and Steve, <laughs> when I saw Steve and Steve laughing, <laughs> I was Love like, you know, Steve. I was like, you know what? I think this, I think this room's on my side. <laughs> so I said, the 2019 college football seminar, whenever we're all said and done, is going to be the best motherfucking college football <laughs> seminar <laughs> in the history. In the history, uh, he, he totally did. It, it was world class. And then, literally, as it was coming out of my mouth, I was like, aggressive decision, <laughs> <laughs> aggressive decision. It got scattering. I was going to say how the room reacts. Scattering. Like <laughs> Scattering laughs. It wasn't for everybody. They didn't know how to react because while this is a great reunion for these this tremendous group of broadcasters. Tremendous. I mean, it's a who's who. <laughs> it really of, was. Of, of, of sports broadcasting excellence. And I'm not saying that trying to be a homer or be cool. But when you're in the same room with Reese Davis and Kirk Herbstreet and, 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 and Steve Levy and all of these guys that are I mean, just, Desmond, you see them you... every day on air. Everybody was greasy, was there? Fucking greasy. <laughs> greasy. I had a yeah. moment. Everybody. And was Pat there. just goes, sit the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> I used, I said, I'm looking around, I'm seeing a lot of celebrities right now. This is a wild scene for me. <laughs> and then when everybody sat down, I would end it with, all right. That was literally my job, to get you guys to sit down. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great day. And I walked off. The first one got a clap. Second one got a clap. Third one, eh, only Hasselbeck clapped. <laughs> Which is good. Good for the team. Good for the team. Those are long days, though. I learned so much out there. So did I. I learn every year. But I'm going to tell you what was the most impactful part for me was when the general was up there today. And, and you have the opportunity to see and learn and hear from a decorated war veteran, a yeah. decorated leader of this country who actually told us today that he led 239,000 troops. International troops, not just American. They were, yeah, it was international. Mul multi, he, two, in Iraq, the Saddam Hussein, uh, he's a, he was the one in charge of the Saddam Hussein captured, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. He yeah. was the guy. And, and it makes you feel so inconsequential it makes you feel so small when you're in the in the presence of someone like that who has such tremendous perspective and and someone like tom tom rinaldi was up there interviewing him and someone like tom who has this innate natural ability to open people up that way and i just i was floored by his testimony and then you follow that up with ryan leaf's Ryan hey. Lee's testimony and everything Ryan's been through and how he's come out the other side and has this second lease on an opportunity in life. He had tried his ass off to throw it all away. Basically and what he said, by the way. That's basically what yeah. he said. That's basically what he, was he said. In, he says to her, the first thing he says to us when he gets up on the stage, guys, five years ago today I was in prison. Mm. And you just you, you see who he is now with this tremendous humility and this tremendous perspective and so much appreciation for coming out the other side. Uh, it's a, it's just it's awesome. And then we learn a whole lot about like what targeting is and stuff. Hold like on, that. I was about to, hold on. I was about to say, yeah, we got this this general, okay, who led the Saddam Hussein attack, yeah. pretty big, pretty large. Like texting with the president, I think a couple of times. Condoleezza Rice. I mean, this guy, big deal. There's a lot of name yeah, dropping in this thing. He's real life. I mean, he's 20 years, no, 40 years in the army. 40 years, in 40 years in the Army. 40 years and in the Army. Was this it Schwarzkopf? No, it no, was, it was uh, a Paisan. Oh, nice for us. If, it was a, a Paisan. <laughs> if, I, if I wasn't on FaceTime with you guys, I could finagle my phone because I put, not only did I put his oh, yeah, name yeah, in my yeah. phone, I but I took down all these different quotes he 
said. Did you take any pictures? That's a professional. Up there? That's a professional move, Marty. Hold on, hold on. I think I got his name. General Ray Odierno. There you go. He likes to there have a go. diversity of opinions around him when making a decision. Yeah. That was a great quote. I respect that. I, I wrote that down. I was like, diversity of opinions. That was like a great way to say, like, I want to hear what every motherfucker in here is going to say. <laughs> I, I, right. I, I respect and, it, and it that so much. thereby gives you a sample of what the general consensus might be. Yeah. That's what leaders do. Great leaders have the ability to delegate. Great leaders have the ability to listen to the people that they employ to be that that level of voice in their ear and their conscience. And I I asked him today, one thing I wanted to know was when you are in charge of so many people and so many landmark, honest to God, life and death decisions on a daily basis, when you're, when, when you get back to the rack and you're looking in the mirror, brushing your teeth at night, what is your message to yourself? Oh yeah. What, what is that self accountability? And I loved his answer. It's, am I making the decision that's right? For the team. Am I make, yes. For am the I team. making the decision that's right for the people in my stead? 